Councilmember Shayla Lynch that represents the second district. And I'm so honored to be here with Director Daniel Sanders. Now, yep. Director Sanders, where are we and what is this building? We are <laughs> at Black and Williams, 498 Georgetown Street. It is part of the Division of Community and Resident Services, which is part of the Department of Housing, Advocacy, and Community Development, part of LFUCG. And it is a building that houses a lot of different resources mm -hmm. that are available for the community. Now, what's a little bit of history on this building? I know it's been here for a very long time. It has. It was originally a school. It was Booker T. Washington um, Elementary School. Um, a lot of people know that school now to be in Douglas Park, but this was the original Booker T. Washington. And then it closed down, and a few years later, the city bought it for community property, and it was renamed Black and Williams, as you can kind of see by the mural, mm -hmm. for Evelyn Black, a social worker who was in the community, and Alex Williams, who was a DJ here. That's awesome. And so this building is really a community resource center that's open to everyone, correct? Correct. Yes. Awesome, awesome. Yes. What, is, what are your hours that you're open to the public? So currently we're open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, there are several different services here. Like I said, community and resident services, they are located here. So they provide financial assistance and mm -hmm. about 10 different financial programs. And so those hours are for the staff that work there. Also youth services, they have a PAGE program, parent and guardian empowerment program. Mm -hmm. WESEP has a program um, for children. So they kind of go past 5 p.m. because they work during the summer school, summer mm -hmm. hours, after school hours. They have an after school program. And so they have an after school program that goes past 5 p.m. We also have the elder crafters who are here. They are here 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Thursday. NAMI, National Alliance on Mental Illness mm -hmm. is here, as well as United Way's Waypoint. And they are here as well from eight to five. And then on Thursdays, they're here from five to eight for their tool library. There's a lot going on there's in this building. And there's a special project that I'm excited about that's being worked on right now. What's going yes, on, Director Sanders? There's a lot of noise going on <laughs> in the gymnasium. Yes. Uh, we are fortunate that the council approved about $2 million for renovation of the gymnasium. And so that is taking place right now. It will be ready in 2024. It is gonna be open for the community on the evenings, on the weekends. So we're excited about the programming that will take place in that gymnasium. I'm so excited too. And I hope everyone comes to not only visit the center um, during the week, but when the gymnasium is back up and running, please come out and visit. Um, I'm excited to go through these doors and okay. uh, show everyone what's inside the doors. So how about we go inside? Sounds great. All right. Director Sanders, um, upon first walking into the building, uh, we see NAMI's offices on the left, and then we have the reading room on the right. Tell us about the reading room. It's a special place. It is, yes. So the reading room is a room that anyone in the community can utilize. It has about 10 Chromebooks with internet access, mm. as well as reading books for preschool, elementary, middle, and high school, and adults. So residents are able to come, take books, leave books, um, there's no system to it. They can take one book, they can take 10 books, mm. and they can sit in there and read. There's a couch, there's bean bags, and then as well, they can also use the Chromebook. So kids can use that to do homework, they can do research, people can work on resumes, you can get on social media. We encourage full use, appropriate use of the mm. Chromebooks, but yeah, they're available. And that's free and open to the community, correct? Yes, ma'am. That's awesome. And then as we walk a little bit further, we hit your office specifically. What do you all provide in your office? What kind of services do you all provide? So we have several different services, lots of different financial programs. One of the things we're best known for is the emergency financial assistance. So our name is Community and Resident Services, but we were formerly known as Adult and Tenant Services. So mm -hmm. a lot of people hear that name and say, oh, okay, those folks. And so with the emergency financial assistance, we provide $1,000 that can be used towards rent, mortgage, or any utility, gas, electric, water. Um, we also provide lex serve assistance so if you receive a LexServe bill, you could qualify for a 50% discount oh, wow. on your sewer, landfill, and water quality, and then also receive 50% off of your bill and then a repayment of that. So if anybody mm -hmm. has one of those 10-day notices, they can call our office to get assistance with LexServe. We also provide um, tree removal. No, we do not provide tree removal. We we screen for the tree removal. So the Division of Forestry, if your tree is between the sidewalk and the street and they mm -hmm. come and say this tree needs to be removed for whatever reason, they would send you to our office to be screened for that. We mm -hmm. also screen for the sidewalk re repair program. So code enforcement, if they come out and they cite you for your sidewalk, 
then they would refer you to us as well. If you meet the financial minimum requirements, mm -hmm. you can get a 100% grant to get that sidewalk repaired and wow, replaced. Wow, 100%. 100%. And if you don't meet the financial requirements, you still can get a 50% okay. grant for that program. We also assist with Code Enforcement's Housing Repair Program. So they have a grant that allows, if you have something on your home that might be considered a code violation, mm -hmm. shingles, gutters, even sometimes roof, painting, then you can call them. They will come out, they will provide you with the form as well. Mm -hmm. And then if you're eligible, you may be eligible to receive a 100% grant. We also work with code enforcement if there's a condemnation. So sometimes mm -hmm. renters may be in a situation where something happens with their home and it's right. condemned. And then they would send you to us. We would, again, screen you and then we could provide a short term hotel stay. And then we also would help you with relocation assistance funds. So $1,000 to help towards your whatever you might need to relocate mm -hmm. um, and then another program that a lot of people don't know that we have is our case management program so we have three social workers who do case management short and long term so mm -hmm. some residents just don't have anybody in their life they may be a vulnerable adult and just need someone to kind of help them navigate navigate through mm -hmm. life whether it's making sure they get it to their medical appointments making sure they have food services set up whether it's helping them get groceries getting their groceries delivered helping them with medication assistance they may do that and then we have a rep payee so if you are on social security income and maybe you're having trouble managing your bills mm -hmm. we would manage those bills for you we would get wow. your social security check and then we would a lot make sure all your bills are paid and give you an allowance every week to kind of live day to day so wow. we do have a lot of programs going on in this building that's awesome and then on top of all that we have a food pantry right here i didn't even know about this till today we do <laughs> we had a um, boy scout last year who was looking for a project for his eagle scout badge and so he did some research on the community and he decided that he wanted to build a free food pantry mm. and so it's kind of like the free libraries that you see in the community mm -hmm. it's the same concept if you come in and if you need something you take something if you have extra you leave it mm -hmm. and so like I said, we have a lot of traffic in this building, and so you will often see food food being utilized. That's wonderful. We have families. some great resources here right in the Black and Williams Center. And next, we're going to go to the Waypoint Center that's located, again, right in this building. I'm here today with Sean Bumpus, the coordinator of the Waypoint Center that's here in the Black and Williams Center. Sean, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for allowing me. What is the Waypoint Center? What can I find here if I come here? Oh, the Waypoint Center here at Black and William is called, it's like a one-stop shop. If anyone needs assistance in getting their rent paid, utilities, if they need help with Medicaid, getting uh, the IDs made, or getting Social Security cards, or if they have child care needs, uh, if they need to get a notary, anything they can do, they can come here and we are try our best to refer them to someone to get that help. Wow, that's a lot. So is it free to utilize all your totally services? It's totally free. How can folks get in contact with you all? They can call our, you know, of course you can always call 211 or they can call directly here into the office. Uh, and then they can come in anytime, Monday through f Friday from nine to five. They don't have to schedule an appointment, just walk in. That's awesome. It's so exciting that you all are here in the Black and Williams building and are providing to, uh, services to the whole community. And, and these are for the whole community, not just the residents and my neighbors in second district but for everybody correct for everybody and we have three locations here in lexington we have one here and one at charles young center and on august the 10th we're going to open up one in central off of for sales road so anyone that's bilingual they can also go to that one as well that's wonderful thank you so much for sharing a little bit about the waypoint center is there anything i left out anything else you want to share just come in and get help it don't matter what you need help in we are here to provide for you thank you sean thank you and now I would love to feature the Elder Crafters program that's also housed in the, here in the Black and Williams building. Director Sanders, can you tell us a little bit about the Elder Crafters program? Yes, it is a group of lovely ladies, sometimes men. Um, they have been in this building for 30 plus years. Wow. They are here Monday through Thursday from about 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. A lot of them um, just come together really just for fellowship. Right now we're in their arts and crafts room where they do pottery twice a week. They have a kiln where they're able to fire things up. Um, across the hall, I'm sure you guys will go in there. They do quilting, they do projects for the community. They recently put together some blankets for dialysis patients. Mm. And so they, each year they decide on a project and then they contribute to that. Um, I know they've done some projects for the Chrysalis House. They've done 
done some things for the ladies at the Hope Center. Mm -hmm. And so they just decide on different projects, work on those, like I said, get together, fellowship. They take trips. Last year I went with them to St. Louis. Okay. 90s. 90s. I couldn't even keep up with those 90-year-old ladies. There were several. <laughs> 80s. I'm trying to, they weren't tired. They were still ready to go to the casino. And I was like, isn't it time to go to bed? <laughs> and so um, they look forward to doing their trips yearly. And like I said, next week they will be going to, there's a new health center. Um, they're going to take a trip out there. They're going to come mm. pick them up so they can go find out about their services. They have exercise class twice a week here as well. So they're, they're an active bunch. They told wow. me I can't join them yet. I think the requirement is, is it 55 ladies? 60. Oh, excuse me, 60. 60. So um, I have a little ways to go, <laughs> but I look forward to joining them at some point um, in the future. That sounds so awesome. So it's such a great resource that we have here at the Black and Women's Building. Um, do I have to be a professional artist to come and participate, or can I just come and use my amateur skills? They will teach you. I have two little sticks up in my office where I tried to learn crocheting. I haven't had a chance to like grasp it, grasp it yet, but um, no, you don't have to. They will, they will teach you all the skills that you need. Like I said, they, they are a fun bunch, so they just, they just want to come together for the fellowship. That's awesome. So come to the Black and Williams Center. There are so many things going on here each and every day. Um, so if you're not, if you haven't been here, you're missing out. So come on down to the second district and come visit. Yes.